Welcome back to After Match. Now, I asked the question just before the break, how many tests did Stan Meads play for New Zealand? The answer was 15. 11 of those with his brother Colin, and just by coincidence, Colin's with me today. Welcome to After Match, Colin Meads. Uh, thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's wonderful you could come in. Uh, your test match locking records just gone. Ian Jones now 50, 56 tests. Any thoughts on any f sadness about losing that record? Oh, no, no, no sadness about it. Uh, I, I think Ian's just beaten Gary Wetton, who beat him, you know. He did too. I think it goes like that. Uh, Gary Wetton beat it some years ago, and uh, by one or two now, Ian Jones mm. has just beaten his record. So, no, it's not sadness. The records are there to be broken, mm. and I don't think any players even in the other day, we didn't go out to make records or create them or anything like that. I think it's just... Um, you know, the, if you keep playing and, you, and you're good enough to keep getting picked, uh, they all just come along. They uh, play so many tests in such a compact period of time now, don't they? Oh yeah, well I, th I think Ian Jones has been playing, what, six or seven years now, mm. sort of thing. And, uh, whereas doesn't I played for long. 15. <laughs> it doesn't take long to rack them up. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look at those test match highlights from Saturday's game at Albany. From the line. First test of the year, the first at Albany, and the first try to Christian Cullen. Cullen was on hand for the next, but only as a spectator. Chance for Ferro to get the first try, and he does. Then the Southland connection took charge. Now it's a way down to Marshall. Wilson. Easy for Jeff Wilson. Newcomers Randall and Umunga played vital roles in try number three. Marshall. Mertens. Umunga got a beautiful pass away. Wilson pops up on the other side. This Wilson touchdown courtesy of Umanga and Stensness. Goal line is right there. Free to away Stensness to Wilson. Here's another one. Free to Jack Wilson. More Michael magic. Marshall turns it back inside Michael Jones. It's another test try for Michael Jones. Man from the tower makes it number four. Taking it 20 metres out from the line. Robin Brick, beautiful sidestep. Just dragged down a metre short. Ball pop for Marshall. And Justin Marshall gets The match was never in doubt, but the future of the world's best flanker just might be. Greats of all black rugby, Michael Jones. Stricks have a player down out of in back. Birmingham gets reward for his fine efforts. The gap. There it is for Frank Bunce. Fijians at sixes and sevens as Robin Brook gets to within five metres of the line. Marshall across to Umunga. And the new boy gets the try. Well, a big moment for Tom Umunga. And Merton's brilliant vision and touch sets up Wilson for his fourth. Fitzpatrick is there, but he sets that Wilson is wide. And Wilson's going to Wilson and get another one. Four to Jack Wilson. Wilson's fifth typical Goldie genius, maintaining his five try average at Albany. Number five coming up for Jack Wilson. For Fiji, while the lights were on, there was no one at home. Charles Rickleman, try on debut. Well, we didn't see it there, but Bill Favambadi had an early shower. Would Kevin Kelly have sent Bill off for that, uh, Colin? Oh no, you'd have to do a lot more in our day to be sent off. But no, I, I thought that was a little bit hard on him. I, um, a little bit careless, perhaps. Yeah, really. Like you know, obviously he'd had a small warning beforehand or something. He'd done something wrong, and uh, but to me, I, I didn't think it was a send off an offence. Mm. Uh, it'd been different if Fitzy was hurt. Uh, I don't think I think Fitzy saw it coming and mm. got pretty was pretty harmless really and. And um, so I, I think it was quite sad for Big Bill. I don't think he's that. Sort of, I don't think he's mm. a mean sort of a man or that type of player. And I, I don't think he had any malice intent mm. in it at all. Did a couple of weeks rest, I think, as a consequence. But yeah, which is sad because I think Fiji probably need him mm. at their series back over in the islands. Mm. Okay, first up win, sixty-six points margin. Hard to be happy with that. Well, if he's not, he'd be pretty hard to please. <laughs> yes. So uh, you'd have to be happy with yeah. it and. Uh, the build-up to it was all around the tight five and how they were playing and that sort of thing. And I think um, 
they answered the questions that were put to them and uh, you know I think all New Zealand's the same we can't really judge just how good we were yeah. um, was it were Fiji that poor or were we extra good some of the early tour matches suggested Fiji's technical improvement had been substantial since we played them some years ago uh, but just the pace and precision they're not on the same leg at the moment are they no I think the All Blacks have um, once you once your tight forwards get on top and they've got such great finishing powers now with Goldie as you mm. Southland people would know him and uh, you know that marvellous fullback running onto mm. everything and this Umunga mm. coming into it uh, you know it just creates well, let's, um, let's look at some of those uh, key positions that were under scrutiny this time. Umang's first test, I thought it was a, a very good effort first up. Yeah, and, and the ball never went his way a lot. He went looking for work. He did a lot of great things in uh, in broken play, you know, setting up rucks. And uh, he might have uh, spilt the ball a couple of times, I think, during mm. the whole game. He'll get told about that pretty much. But uh, I think his general play was real good. And um, it's just a pity he didn't get more to finish off. Mm. But his turn will come. And yeah. all he's got to do is just keep in there and uh, play well. OK, one position that came up for uh, quite a bit of talk last week was Tane Randall at number eight. I thought he uh, had an excellent game. Well, it was a good game for Tane. And, um, you know, and I think Tane had everything to go out because he knew the next one's in, he's going to come back in. And mm. uh, I don't think anyone in New Zealand expected him to keep Zinni yeah. out of the next test. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a good game for him. Uh, he had, had criticism leading up to it. And um, it's always good to see them have a... A good game when there is criticism mm. of them being picked and uh, so I think he'd be terribly happy with that and I think the selectors have shown some confidence in him by putting him in Michael Jones's place mm. for the next one. Right, sad loss, Michael Jones out for the season it seems. Yeah it is, it's always a sad loss and uh, any player is a lot, you know, mm. and to have an injury like that it's quite horrendous no matter mm. who the player is but for Michael Jones at a stage in his career when he probably thinks I've had my share of injuries I mm. don't need any more, um, it must be tragic but uh, that's the breaks in rugby and um, you know his misfortunes is at this in this case Dane Randall's mm. good fortune. Mm. Uh, Frank Bunce, I thought he was a, perhaps a game short of his best but provided a lot of good link work. Yeah it's not for me to say uh, I, I think the Fijians went out there to bottle uh, Frank up mm. uh, and he was bottled up pretty much he never mm. had any clean breaks or anything mm. like that we expect of Frank in every game but uh, he did well enough to suggest that he might be coming into form and uh, uh, everyone says he's one or two games short. I think he might be four or five, you know, he's mm. now 35 and, and it just takes, takes you longer to get into the groove yeah. and uh, as he said himself, he's not match fit and that sort of thing. So mm. he can only get better and uh, hopefully they'll persevere with him for a while yet. And uh, the combination with Stenson and Stan Spencer coming in for this next test should be an interesting... Well, yeah, as long as they don't bamboozle Frank, that's all yeah. Yeah, outside. <laughs> you know, because Roni Clark pops up everywhere and anywhere, you know, when yeah. he's playing with them. And uh, Frank might get completely bewildered by what's going on. But, uh, and I don't mean that uh, really seriously, but, uh, you know, I, th I think Spencer's, he's been an up-and-coming player for a long time. Uh, we, uh, from my neck of the woods, you know, we've got great sympathy with uh, a local boy from down here, Simon, and I mm. understand he's still injured and that sort mm. of thing, a shame. Uh, which is a shame because it would have been interesting if he'd have been, you know, fit and well all the way through. And, yeah. and uh, just with the harder games coming up after these next two, you know, mm. they, they might go back to the tried and trusted. I hope so, because yeah, Spencer certainly gets all the coverage, don't they? Oh, very much, and he plays in a, in a great team in, in Auckland. You know, we've got to be of credit with credit to you. They are a great team, and they mm. do play pretty exciting rugby, and mm. he's part of it. Mm. Did you see enough of uh, Charles Rickleman to make a, make a judgment? He was perhaps one of the bigger surprises for most people, given that he hadn't played much this year. Yeah, they obviously see something in him that, uh, you know, he produces at times. He's obviously a pretty great physique and great trainer mm. and all that, but... Uh, you know, that doesn't win your games when you're no. 10, 11 down or something like that and two minutes to go. Uh, what I, I see of him, he's a flamboyant sort of a character. Even the try he scored in this game, I'd, uh, I think there's easier ways of scoring tries. He looked like he'd knocked himself around <laughs> again this time. So, and I, Why players do that, I don't know. Mm. When you, you've done all the hard work, you've mm. got yourself there. Um, I think it would be far easier just to stand up and dot it down, just but uh, he's obviously a player for the future and uh, you know the next month or so is going to tell us a lot more, but I do feel sorry for the Canterbury boys.
Todd Blacker. Mm, it's sort of an outstanding trial and, and, and a good Super 12. Well, the, the, his trial form was, uh, of all of his forts on the day, was probably the best. And, mm. uh, you know, and I can understand him not being picked, you know, because he's, he's, he'll always be picked in a 30-man squad. Mm. Uh, and they probably don't see him as test material as such. But uh, I, I just felt he, he deserved a better break. And, mm. uh, you know, I thought he might have got Michael Jones's place, but they've stuck with Tane, and that's uh, showing consistency in their selections, mm. and uh, good luck to them. And what can we expect from Argentina? Well, only improvement. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can't get worse. And uh, that's a very good Maori side they did play. Mm. We, we've got to say that. and. Uh, it would give um, a lot of international sides a, a pretty good tailing up, but uh, Argentine didn't have their full component of players here, and uh, by reading the press, I believe there's another five forwards that haven't arrived in New Zealand yet that played against England, so right. maybe that could make a big difference, but um, you know, knowing John Hart and knowing the selection panel, they're not going to get you know, sucked mm. into a false sense of security. And I expect the All Blacks will win this one. They might, I don't think it'll be quite 70, but it'll be 40 or 50. And uh, whether that's good for them with the games of Australia mm. and South Africa coming up is, remains to be seen. Mm. OK, Colin, you've done just about everything else in rugby. You're not available for the Waikiki Senior Seas, my team, this week. Any chance there? <laughs> no, no, I'm going home Friday in case I had to play, you see. So uh, I wouldn't be available for... What team is that? Waikiki? Waikiki Senior Seas. Yeah, seas. played against them many years ago. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, on a club tour. Well, I gave it my best shot, guys. I'm sorry he's just not, not around this weekend. Anyway, that's about it for after match. A big thanks to Colin Meads for coming in uh, out of your busy schedule. We'll be back at the same time next week from the whole team here. Good afternoon.